What's up guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. And um last week, I mean just an amazing week on the market. We had a great watch list. Um if this is your first time tuning in, please um like, comment, and subscribe to our X Trades YouTube channel. I'm trying to get stuff to hit the algorithm a little bit more. So uh, if you could do that, that'd be great. Um and maybe even go review the last watch list we had. Um see if you can get some educational value out of it because we had some great setups. And um, caught a lot of upside this week on the market. So um, should make another interesting week on the stock market this week. Um, went crazy last week. So let's go ahead and get into our first setup here. This is um, ticker symbol QCOM. So it's Qualcomm. Um, setup's pretty obvious, right? You got test number one, test number two, test number three. Now breaking out to the upside. You got two confirmed candles outside the downtrend break. So this could be given a little... Um, run up to the upside here. Um, it'd probably be a little short term though. Um, you got a supply zone right there, so it could make it a little bit riskier for calls. But um, if you wanted to, you could also get time on your contracts. But I think this would make a good day trade short term. Um, just trade up to the supply, sell at supply. Um, if you really want to get time on your contracts, you could hold past supply. Um, you could deal with any resistance that way because you have time, you know, till expiration. But um, the setup seems pretty obvious. Breaking out, um, trade up the supply. You got positive MACD. Um, RSI is crossing back over 40. So um, you do have signs of positive momentum here. Um, you also have it clearing the 50 EMA on the daily time frame. So that could be good. But yeah, so let's look at calls on this this week. And uh, go ahead and get into our next setup here. And this week, you know, there's it's a mixed bag, right? There, there's a couple of setups that um, are given two opportunities. They're tracking calls and puts, but um, we'll go ahead and get into those. So, um, Microsoft, this is actually only a put setup that I want to look at, and it's really only for a day trade. So, you can see um, <clears throat> Microsoft finally filled this gap, right, um, from its last earnings report. Go ahead and add this gap real quick. So yeah, so I filled filled the gap, this little golden zone you see here. Um, and once it fills, I mean, a lot of stocks, you'll start seeing it get resistance, right? And not to only mention that, it's running into supply here. So um, we'll draw a little thing. you probably see resistance about here. Maybe come back down, test that little gap resistance right there. Maybe try to curl up there or something. But um, I think this will just make a quick good day trade, assuming you can get the confirmation of a rejection. Because you do have two things working against you here. You do have a positive MACD showing positive momentum. And you also have a clear in the daily 50 EMA. So yeah, just something to just something to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, this would be invalid if we went over supply. So if it did something like that, they'd probably try to like curl up out there after making a base off um, you know, old resistance. But yeah. So just wait for confirmation, of course. You'd want to see the morning opening up with, you know, selling or um, just confirmation that it's not clearing supply yet. You do have a couple things working against you. Like I said, the MACD, um, the 50 EMA, and also VIX um, volatility is low. So just something to keep in mind. But um, yeah, so we're looking at puts on that. Qualcomm, we're looking at calls. Um, Microsoft looking at puts. And there's a couple other that are kind of a mixed bag also. So this week you're going to really want to especially wait for confirmation showing you that you should take setups because you are getting mixed results um, by some of these setups and as well as getting you know mixed signals from the market. So next we'll go into PayPal and you'll see what I see um, what I mean in this setup here. So we got test one, test two, there's a third, um, almost a test four. We'll pretty much count that as a test four. Now coming up for a fifth test at this downtrend line. Um, you'd be looking for a little bit of resistance here, maybe. Um, you'd want to see it confirmed under by open. Um, otherwise, if it opens over it, it's going to head back up to supply more than likely. So I'm going to be looking at calls and puts on this, not just puts um, because it's at the downtrend. I'm going to be looking you know, at calls too, maybe. But like I said, we want to see it opening outside or opening inside. Um, that's going to be the deal breaker. And you don't want to just rush into it 
you know, and take a wild guess. You do have a little resistance right here. Oops, accidentally added an extra one. So you got a little resistance right here. If you stay up under 91.34, that's another good confirmation that I could see a little downside. Head back to this 50 EMA maybe. Um, so yeah, it'd probably just be another little day trade. Um, if you could get the confirmation of either, swing trade, just get time on expiration per usual. Um, and you know, if you did take calls to the upside for a swing trade, you're not really that overbought on the RSI yet. You just got a positive MACD signal, so that could be giving early signs of upside. Um, it just depends. So puts, maybe look at quick day trades if you get confirmation. Calls you can maybe put up with a little bit longer to the upside um, to the end of the year. Um, we'll just have to see. Um, price targets for puts, you'll just be looking at the 50 EMA. Um, price target for calls short term, you'll be looking at the supply right here. Or, you know, maximum, you know, 95.57 at the top of this resistance. So, yeah, um, mixed bag, two setups, uh, potential setups, calls or puts. Just wait for confirmation. Okay, UPST is Upstart Holdings. Um, they do like, you know, loans and stuff for, um, you know, just regular consumers. But you can see pulling up to the downtrend line here, we got test one, test two, test three. Um, also have the 50 EMA in the way. You got a negative MACD signal. RSI is crossing over 40, so that could be given an early sign for positive momentum, but we'll have to see. So same thing as um, PayPal. You're gonna see it open up under the downtrend line confirming resistance. Um, for puts, or you want to see it opening over, or, you know, at least attempting to, and it could run up, you know, back to this little, here, we'll add this little peak first. So, yeah, if it broke out, you can see it um, running up to that little peak, maybe reject about there. If I can get through that, you know, it head up to the next supply, something like that. Um, downside, it's pretty obvious. I mean, this is just a total buy imbalance. You know, if bear market does go back into effect, um, you know, this whole buy imbalance area can fill back down. They had a pretty bad earnings. So, um, yeah, just wait for confirmation on this. Um, you can see it's not clear the daily 50 EMA. So this could have a little bit harder time um, getting positive momentum. But if it can get the breakout and over the 50 EMA, that gives you really good confirmation to 2610 and also supply. So, yeah, calls and puts on this too. Just wait. Same with PayPal. So these are two like more decision trades. Um, you're gonna be waiting, you know, to pick a direction. Obviously, Microsoft um, more clear at supply. Um, it could make a good, you know, quick day trade off supply. Qcom quick day trade um, on the breakout up to supply also. Next, we'll go into IWM. So I usually just track track this, you know, as like you know an overall market indicator. But I do like trading it sometimes too. Um, same with QQQ and SPY. Um, really, any of the ETFs that have good liquidity on the options, I like trading. So, with IWM here, you can see we had a great breakout, I mean, a couple weeks ago. Um, finally pulling up to supply. So, this is a rally based drop supply zone. Um, you also have 200 EMA resistance and you have the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level right here. Um, and that could, you know, call for clear resistance, honestly. With all three of these things in in confluence, um, there's a pretty good chance that this can reject. Um, if it got over, obviously, you know, as such, it would probably try to make a base off that, you know, like I always preach. Um, if it breaks over resistance, it'll pull back in, into old resistance, make support, and go higher. But um, this little wick off supply, kind of giving a clear signal maybe that um, bulls, you know, maybe aren't as strong on this one at, at, towards the end of the day um, on Friday. But, yeah, you just have to be careful also because of the, you know, the VIX is, you know, pretty low. Um, we do have the dollar giving us a little bit of signals. We'll, we'll go into that um, in a little bit, though. But IWM, so you do have a gap right here, pretty obvious. Um, that's from the CPI report. Um, inflation did go down a little bit, um, quote unquote. So market rallied very heavily. But IWM, if it could reject, you could maybe see it go back down, fill the inbounds area, fill the gap, try to make support and curl up about there. Um, you know, that could take a little bit. And 
Also, we're going to be going into the seasonality. You'll see why that may not happen um, for the rest of the year. But um, just something to consider. This whole buy imbalance area can be easily filled back up. But yeah, just, um, just like all the other put setups this week, you want to always wait for confirmation, see confirmation of selling, maybe around the open. And um, yeah, just taking quick day trades, maybe, you know, not overstaying your welcome due to volatility dropping and also due to inflation dropping a little bit. Um, makes, makes bears, you know, a little bit more at risk. So yeah. So QCOM, we're looking at calls, Microsoft puts, PayPal, UPST, both waiting uh, for confirmation for calls or puts since they're both at trend lines. IWM would be looking strictly at puts just because of the three um, thing confluence. So you got supply, you got 61.8 retracement, and you have the daily 200 EMA. So three areas of confluence that can turn into resistance. Next, we're going to go into the ES S&P 500 futures. Let's go ahead and fix this up a little bit because there's a lot of resistance points. So last week, let's see. We were looking at this demand zone down here, right? Um, we said there was a chance if it held. Hang on, add this demand. So this is the same thing we were looking at last week. I'm just kind of going over it with you again. Um, we, op we were about right here. We had confirmation that it was holding. We said if it did, it could run back up to the downtrend line. It did exactly that and broke out. So it had a total major breakout. Um, created a couple new demand zones, which is good. Got over the October peak and got over the resistance that we covered um, last Sunday. So just a crazy move from that inflation report. Um, you can see it's coming up to the daily 200 EMA, which is, um, I mean, that can act as resistance. So you have to be careful. You can see this is a huge sell imbalance candle. Um, it could fill back up eventually, but um, with the 200 EMA, you might just want to be careful. And you'll see on the um, seasonality that, you know, we could see a little bit of resistance maybe before going higher this week. So um, if it does decide to reject the 200 EMA, you'd see it pull in probably, try to make support off there before, you know, going up to our next trend line from all time highs down to here. So this is our major blue trend line. Um, that's pretty much, that covers the whole 2022 and, um, you know, all time highs. So it's a pretty important one. And eventually it will be tested. So yeah, just um, maybe look for resistance this week. Uh, if it can get over the 200 EMA, you can see it running up to supply and the downtrend line. And uh, we'll go into the seasonality real quick. So this is, what is this? November 14th up to November 18th. So that's our trading week. Um, you can see S&P is averaging a negative 33% return. Um, nothing too big. And you can see down here, it is a little dip. So just something to keep in mind. And remember, this is not like something to totally abide by. It's just, you know, something to look back on um, due to history. And history so does sometimes repeat itself, so. And you saw last week, we, we you know, we had about a about the same, but in a positive return. So we had about, you know, like a 0.3% return to the upside. We were really able to get some upside. So I'd say we're following the seasonality pretty well. Um, minus one week that I did cover. Um, it actually did the opposite. So, you know, it's not always going to follow, but. Yep. Next, we're going to NQs, the NASDAQ. So. Um, you know, at one point we had that inverse head and shoulders. Um, we invalidated it pretty much. And now, um, oh, I'm sorry, we also had that downtrend line. We hadn't cleared it yet. We cleared it this week. Um, and then we were just saying to watch this 52 week low and that it could, you know, base out down here to, to maybe go higher up to the trend line. Um, it actually exceeded that, you know, by a pretty, pretty, pretty large percentage. So, um, you know, we can only like, go off what's in front of us. And at the time, down here, um, if it's making a base, we can really only guess up to the trend line until it clears it. Well, now it's clearing it. It's also clearing this resistance. So now, we want to do the same thing as the ES, you know, make a base off previous resistance to be able to go higher. Um, and you can see it's not even close to the 200 EMA like ES is. So this could still have a lot of upside. Um, 
I'm not really seeing any clear signs for resistance on tech yet. Maybe this little supply area right here, but we'll have to see. Um, puts, like I said earlier, just going to want to maybe keep it, you know, at day trades. Um, be really careful with swings. Maybe wait for VIX to get to like 19 or something like that um, to play a mean regression back towards the average. And we'll go over that in our next but yeah, so you can see it broke out that short-term line. This is another big trend line that I would watch. Um, this is kind of like similar to the one on ES, but this is not the one from all-time high. If we move this up here to all-time high area, um, you know, it bring you up to there. So eventually, the NASDAQ can see it, you know, come up to here and try to reject about there. But yeah, so this is also the most hated rally peak. This was when um, we pretty much retraced 50% of our losses for 2022. And it pissed a lot of people off because <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. Um, and that was when there's a lot of pivot rumors going around. So, you know, we, we can see that again now that we have a little bit of signs of inflation cooling down. But that doesn't mean that the macro is looking great because it's really not yet. You know, one month of a report is not something to justify, you know, a a bull run and um you know all-time highs again you know we could be very far from that just something to consider so yeah just looking for it to base out on this old resistance maybe head back up to here if it can um obviously the whole market would need to move you know in sync with that um sometimes tech will outperform a little bit you know it, it will go a little bit higher than the others same with the dow dow's only down negative seven percent year to date um, compared to a lot of other things that's Seriously, like that's a win. Um, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. VIX. All right, so first let's get into the data and then we'll go over a little bit what we went over last week and what to look for this week. Let's see if I can get it up here. All right, after Friday's close on 11.11, make a wish. We had 22.53 as a close. Um, this brought our average down to 26.20. I believe last Sunday was like 26.26 or something, 26.25, somewhere around those. So it did drop. Um, and that's because of the multiple closes under it, obviously. So yeah, so we have a 26.20 average close for the year 2022. Um, we can see it actually, it pulled back up to it, which is really interesting, and then literally rejected right off the area and this little 200 EMA. So clear median line, clear area of resistance, and it's also, you know, a, a median line or, you know, something that it will regress back towards. And it can act as resistance, it can act as support, um, because it is an average price. So yeah, last week we said look for it to fall. It did fall. So look for 2264, it hit 2264. So now um, it did close under that. Maybe we could see it try to hold up this level a little bit. Um, depending, you know, how high the dollar wants to go, you can see it's up a little bit, but, um, and if it wants to follow the seasonality, of course, so it could base out here, maybe try to go back up to the average me personally. Um, eventually I do think it will fall down to the 19s and try to curl up there. And that's where I'll look at, you know, longer dated put swings, um, stuff you can hold shorts overnight because volatility is cheap. And um, because eventually it will um, go for a mean regression back to the average. Um, it'll do that for both sides. So you saw, you know, in our, one of our videos, we had 35. Um, from 35, we're looking for a mean regression back to the average. It did that. Now we wait for it to get about 19, and then it would come back up to the average. So, yeah, just something to just watch this 2264 level. Maybe look for it to base out volatility to come up a little bit. Um, and also look for it to maybe fall to 19, uh, 19s or 20s or so. Um, you know, if, if the dollar can stay, you know, down and um, yields can stay down, stuff like that, bonds bounce, we could see volatility come back down some more. But I'm not sure I'll be looking for this 19 level this week. Um, I don't think I'm really expecting too large of moves in the market. We might have to see some resistance and make a base and structure to go higher first um, and that's kind of what I'm aiming to look for next the dollar so the US dollar um, 
we were looking for this 109 area to hold for bears. It failed to do that. Um, and also broke under a longer term trend line, which is just amazing because we've been covering this, you know, for a while now. And, you know, I said once it gets under this trend line, you know, bulls would come out. And they, <laughs> they certainly did. So we definitely want to see it staying under this. Um, we can see maybe fall as low as 104s. You can see down here, um, there's that 104.63 level right here. And um, there's also the daily 200 EMA, so it could probably try to curl up about there. I'm guessing that's where currency traders would, you know, maybe start looking for it to reverse. Um, just due to technicals and, you know, moving averages are, you know, a very old school and very reliable um, area to look at, you know, stuff to turn around at. And even reject. Uh, it can act as resistance too. So, yeah, look for it to fall a little bit more maybe. Oops. Look for it to fall a little bit more maybe. Um, down to 104. Something like that. Or you can see it make a base off the 200 before going back up to 107 and rejecting about there. And we're just using that previous area as a price target if it, de if it decided to bounce. And our downside target, we're using this pivot right here. So yeah, um, you can see the MACD is holding a negative signal. Um, so we got plenty of negative momentum still. RSI is getting a little low. Um, that's a little bit concerning because it, it could bounce from that. But we'll have to see. Um, all that we can do is, you know, look at what's in front of us and, you know, make an educated guess. So that's all trading is, waiting for something to hold, waiting for something to break, waiting for something to break out. Um, that's all it is. Um, and that's all technical analysis and charting is. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our X Trades YouTube channel. And um, I'm going to go ahead and end this and get this video up for y'all, get the watch list and all that good stuff. But y'all have a blessed Sunday. Thank you.